Oh, that's not a bad omen or anything. I'll be relaying orders to you from now on. Estevakia's remaining forces are starting to gather near Moloch Desert in East Anion. They're combining all of their forces in an attempt to stop us from recapturing Grace Maria. This operation will involve a very intense siege battle. Once the enemy's line of defense is ruined, chase them down. If you let them escape, they're going to fortify their defenses around Grace Maria. I know you must be chopping at the bit to get going, but taking out the enemy here pretty much guarantees us victory. We'll make it back to Grace Maria alive. All of us. Engage. Engage. <laughs> so, oh god, yeah, well, what do you know? Another big, giant battle mission is like, how can you tell Ace Comet 6 is running low on its bag of tricks? Well, I think I can know how by the fact that you know, you still haven't run out of enemy planes to shoot down. I thought you were going to say because of the fact that you LP'd it before. That is, in fact, true. Hello, I'm Tyrant Saber, and uh, one of my, you know, questionable claims to fame is having done this on the LP subforums back in the, oh, oddies. Back when this game was basically brand new. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think they were still releasing DLC when I got on it, so... Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> But I wasn't paying too much close attention to it at the time because, you know, at that time I was still basically a poor student, so I couldn't uh, couldn't afford to keep up with the DLC every week. Uh, whereas, like, I only just bought the stuff that uh, I absolutely wanted, like, uh, you know, the, the Ace Combat Zero stuff, the Ace Combat 04 and whatnot, and just the free stuff. Yeah. Like, me and Scion were just sort of comparing what DLCs we had over PMs, like, a little while ago, and it was basically like, oh yeah, we, we basically decided on the same things, like, all the stuff we could afford. <clears throat> I think I did wind up getting the Ace of Aces stuff, and I think I did wind up getting uh, some of the cooler purchase DLC. I don't think I got the Idolmaster stuff, but I oh, I could be oh, wrong. Who, who would admit to getting the Idolmaster stuff, though? I don't know, man. This is something awful. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the thread... Uh, just wants to have my head over this shit. Garuda team, time to take off. <laughs> See, so yeah, we're gonna take the Rafal out. Just, you know, because I'm trying to vary all of my uh, plane choices across the game, and then we're gonna get some little bit of use out of the SODs, because goddamn, did they really, really, really rework the SODs for uh, Ace Combat 6. Now, when I started playing Ace Combat, I believe 6 was actually my first one. It was about, like, the second game I got on the Xbox 360, and I didn't play any of the PlayStation 2 ones before. That's enough talking. Oh, so basically you, you were one of those people where the really, really stupid pandering tutorial was actually useful for, and yep. holy shit, look at those explosions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Making some yeah, trenches. Yeah, oh, the, those crops are ruined now. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's kind of their fault for insisting on farming during an ongoing war. <laughs> it's like, the war didn't start when they planted the crops. <laughs> well, except maybe they did, because didn't wasn't this, like, over the span of a year that it takes for the Grace Mary, or the Marian forces to fly from... Grace Mary to Vitoze and get back to this point? Uh, close to it. I think like six or seven months. Like, the the game starts in August 2015 and it, it ends like April 1st, 2016. So that's, you know, most of a harvest season. Yeah, basically about, about the time it takes to have a baby, more or less. Yep. Oh god, like, that's gonna be incredibly awkward. Like, when you get to Ace Combat 8 and, like, we're dealing with, like, the fucking... Emeria Estovakia War Babies. Well, what I would like to see, and I was just thinking about this today, was um, they have actually made um, oh god, what's the name? Erusia, a big thing in Ace Combat 7 again, which makes me wonder, mm. are they going to bring back Mobius as either a plot device or an actual, you know, nemesis in the game? 
I don't know, that would be really cool if they did. But it's... I don't know, from the way it's shaping up, it looks like, uh... Yeah, Eruja is the bad guys, and then, like, just... ISAP has been completely forgotten about between here and Ace Combat 04, because, like... For some reason, like, Osea has a military presence on Uzia again. Well, I mean, like, to be fair, who wouldn't forget about a country whose name is the Independent State Allied Forces? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, it wasn't really a country. They were representing the FCU, but it was like, they were basically, like, weird, like, you know, Asian-European NATO, kind of. Yeah, kind of a Southeast Asian treaty organization of Strange Real. Mm. Well, while I'm commenting on stuff, here's an observation to try out on you. Um, Ace Combat 6, I think, is one of the the games that places the heaviest emphasis on air-to-ground fighting. How do you feel? We've got a clear path to the air. Yeah, I'd actually agree with that, really. And it, I, I, like, I feel like the... Uh, the game itself, or at least the marketing for it, kind of reinforces that because Ace Combat... I don't remember any of the PlayStation 1 games, but Ace Combat 2, you had the F-22 featured heavily. Uh, Ace mm. Combat... Sorry, what is it? Ace Combat 2? I meant Ace Combat 04 had the F-22 featured heavily. Um, I want to say Ace Combat 5 had the... What was it? The Hornet? Uh, the Tomcat. The, Tom the, the, the Cannon one. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely see where you're coming from, because, like, this game, like, either, like, structurally or implicitly, like, it's basically built around a big giant ground war that, like, it kind of goes out of its way to just kind of subtly point out that, you know, yeah, sure, you're hot shit for the military or for the Air Force, but you're really just one piece of this giant offensive. Well, I just thought it was kind of interesting where, you know, you had Mobius and Blaze and Cypher, who are all hotshot fighter pilots, and then you've got Talisman, who's more or less just a mud mover. Mm. And, like, that is the thing with, like, the operations that you can do across the game where, like, I've said this a couple of times where uh, you can really easily just sort of customize the game to uh, your playstyle, like if you want to focus on air-to-air -air missions, like each mission will usually have an element, like or an operation that is strictly air-to-air. -air. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's quite overbalanced or uh, ground offensive heavy, I find. Yeah, like, sure, I think you the know, landing under enemy fire, big deal. Yeah. At least it didn't fall out of the sky on this one. <laughs> Oh, well, th that last 10 feet was a bit of a bumpy drop. That's what the suspension is for. Come on. <laughs> I just think, yeah, this, this is the reason why I uh, did this operation first. I wanted to make sure I captured the airfield. Yeah, having the airfield available on this mission and uh, the Silvot and some of the other ones is really kind of useful because you, not only can you reload without having to go back to the return line, but you can also switch up your weapons mm. and, uh, you know, take on another mission if you wind up in a case uh, situation where, say, your SODs or you know, your fuel air bombs aren't working against a mostly air-to-air -air target. Because, mm. like, yeah, I was going to mention earlier that, like, really there's only, like, a three actual, like, strictly air-to-air -air missions. And, like, we kind of jumped out ahead of both of them in, like, the recording, but, like, by the time this video goes up, like, they'll have already been seen, like, then that's, uh, Solumna Peak and, uh, Heavy Command Cruiser. And then Mystery Mission, you know. Yeah, you know. coming up in a little bit after this, yeah. Uh, you know, ap even having played um, Ace Combat 6 first and having gone back to them, there are things that I do appreciate more about the other games, but I still think I like Ace Combat 6, like, second most out of all. Ace Combat 0 had just about all the same kind of features and 
innovations as this one does, barring, say, the operation system and the advanced uh, allied attack system. Mm, but uh, in terms of actual content, it seemed like there was a heck of a lot more in that one in Ace Combat Zero than there was. Our northern ground unit is now engaged. And I'm kind of of the same mind, really, where, uh, like, on a technical level, I think Six is my favorite, but just like, uh, like in terms of like the game that kind of did everything right, I would have to say that would be Zero. And I'll just go ahead Which, and put it out there: my unpopular opinion for them. Uh, Talisman is almost my favorite wingman, and Pixie did nothing wrong. Uh, get out. <laughs> Our bomber unit is down to forty percent. <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, Talisman's, you know, fine. He's a family man. Oh, oh, you mean Shamrock? Oh, uh, what did I say? Talisman? Yeah, Shamrock. Yeah, t t yeah t Talisman's our player character, yeah. yeah. Um, but, Not uh, drinking well, heavily enough. I was gonna say, give it a couple minutes, I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> oh, you know, uh... He's a good guy, he just wants to get home to his family. And he stole my kill there. What a prick. Mm. But, yeah, like, uh, well, again, like, Pixie's everyone's favorite wingman, but at the same time, he's also kind of a, you know, dumb shit anime teenager in, like, a 30-year-old's body. Well, you you did see his, his uh, live-action actor. Oh god, yeah, that that was a very, very pretty man. Don't let them slip out of sight. It's like And didn't they hell have, they like, didn't they have like Yuri Lowenthal to play his voice actor or something? Yeah, I was gonna say, like, they almost could have had Yuri just playing Pixie himself. Like Also uh okay. Garuda team, you're almost to Great Speria. Put everything you've got into this. Also like better reload. Kinda quick. slightly yeah, I was gonna say, I kind of slightly screwed up the scripting on it, because, like, I get to the airfield right as the wham line hits. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, the line there was, yeah. you're supposed to be, you're, you've been ordered to evacuate. You've got to be kidding me. Mm. Oh, well, it replays the line when you come out of the, uh, here we go. Mission command is ordered an evacuation. All planes, cease fire immediately. I repeat, all planes cease fire immediately. Because it's like, yeah, hmm, I wonder why I had to go back and get the anti-air weapons. This is no joke. I'll say it again. Cease fire immediately. That's an order. Retreat from the airspace. Well, just like uh, uh, just like Estovakia is a poor, piss poor reproduction of Yuktabania. Strigan is really just a piss poor. Garuda team, that's an order. It's it's the Czechoslovakia to uh, S to yeah, it's, it's, um, it's uh, Russia. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, yeah. Strigan team is like the the crappy East European knockoff of Yellow Squadron. It's like it's the fucking Yugo of fighter squadrons. Also, yeah. Okay, we've been ordered to evacuate, so yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's do this, Garuda one. Almost at the return line. Motherfucker! Oh, Shamrock, you fucking idiot! Don't you see what's happening here? Comply with your order immediately! Uh, I am. Look at me, Ghost Eye. I'm running away from the fight. It's not my fault my wingman's a dumbass. Yeah. It's alright. Just blame it on the 8492nd Squadron. Uh, Cease fire immediately. I'm glad Burnett's is dead. Kill off this unit. I can go home. Back to my family. Shamrock, are you listening to me? You're yeah, this, this is basically like veteran military pilot suddenly forgets how the military works. Also, did he rip the radio out of his plane? I think that's what's implied there, yes. Because, you know, lacking tactical awareness, again, hallmark of uh, military professionalism. Mm. Uh, 
Also, yeah, so as you can kind of see here, you, like, whether you want to or not, you are locked into this boss fight. Like, you know, you can try to run away from it and actually follow your orders, but, uh, yeah, no, the game will not allow you to do that. You've got to take on Strigan Team and bail Shamrock's dumbass out of the fire. And I believe this is the first time where you were obliged to kill more than about one or two Strigan members. Uh... Second time, actually. Also, there's the uh, B-52 hammerhead flying around in the background there. I thought that was nice. Not sure why he's engaged in this furball, but... No, I, I meant, mm. you know, I seem to recall that uh, Bartolomeo Fortress makes you fight a couple of them. Yeah, they, they usually show up in either, like, twos or threes, and... Uh, I guess I guess you heavy... do have to fight a couple in uh, Heavy Command yeah, Cruiser well, 2. Yeah, Heavy Command Cruiser are basically, like, six you against, like, seven of them. And, like, that's basically, like, that's their high point in the game. Like, after that, uh, they start to, like, come down in terms of, like, how much of a threat they are. Well, you say that, but... <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves now. Fuck you, Pasternak, you flying douchebag. <laughs> also, yeah, I, I do love that they go the serious route with it and they cut the music out completely from this fight. Which is a shame, because the boss fights in Ace Combat have always had great music. Would like to have mm. hear, heard what they had in store for this one in such a dire situation. Oh, yeah, well, again, like... You know this probably better than anyone in the thread, really, that, like, Ace Combat, like, 6 is, like, it has planted its flag in being the tone-deaf one. So it's like, if they can find a way to screw up, like, an actual emotional moment, they'll do it. Yeah, but, like, you know, Ace Combat 5, you had a whole bunch of, again, military personnel who were busily killing everybody they could find, all the while complaining about how they want to br bring back the peace. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that, like, uh, like, five is formally tone deaf, but like, six is structurally tone deaf. Now I can finally get back to Grace Maria. Also, duuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu